Receiving the Classic Contribution Award tonight, not so much for your music as for your role as an educator and mentor. Can you talk for a minute about what that means to you? Well, for me, it means a great deal. You know, it, it gives me a chance to give back uh, the, the way things were given to me. You know, when I came along in the music business, I was very fortunate enough to meet a lot of my heroes, Dizzy Gillespie, Clark Terry, Freddie Hubbard, Miles Davis, and all of those guys were always very giving with knowledge and trying to encourage me and make sure that I knew what to do to kind of help develop my career. So for me, to work with young people is, is a bit of an honor and it's a way for me to pay back. And you had a, a major role in moving the, uh, the Monk Institute back to your st old stomping grounds in Louisiana. What has that been like and what have the kids been like that you've been able to mentor down there? Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to move the Monk Institute to New Orleans is because of our commitment to community service. And it's had a great impact in the community. Uh, we see a lot of young kids right now in the middle schools and high schools who are really in, uh, uh, inspired to, to enter into the world of jazz uh, because they see other young people doing it and they're, they're engaged with these other young people and they've been creating these relationships that are ongoing even now. I mean, we've only been there for three years, but uh, we've had a great impact. I'll give you one example. Our kids did a, a demonstration at a, at a middle school and the vocalist in the program at the time, John A. Kendricks, was talking about jazz improvisation as a vocalist. 13-year-old girl raised her hand and she says, I think I can do that. And to me, that, 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 that speaks volumes. First of all, for her to have enough courage to stand up in front of all of her peers and say that, but then also to be willing to come out and really enter into this world of music. Let me ask you a quick question about your own career. Uh, what has it meant to you in your career to work on all these Spike Lee movies, which really sort of moved you in the film direction? Well, I mean, it's, for me, it's been a godsend and a blessing because I got a chance to work, I'm, well, I'm getting a chance to work with a true visionary in the business. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things that's helped me with Spike is that he doesn't want the usual type of film scores. So it's kind of made me develop a sound or, or a style of, of, of uh, scoring films, if you will. Another thing, too, is that he always challenges me. You know, he always, the first thing he'll say is, okay, what is it that we haven't done yet? <laughs> That's the first question I always get. So it constantly keeps me on edge and constantly keeps me thinking. And, but I love it, though. I love the challenge. And what are you working on right now? Well, there's a, a, a project in the works that Spike is working on. It's a sequel to his documentary, When the Levees Broke. Yeah, uh, for HBO. Uh, so we're very excited about that. He has just about all of the, the, the interviews done, uh, and we're looking to score in maybe about a couple of months. The, the goal is to have it ready for the anniversary of the, the hurricane later on this year. And can you just talk for a second about what BMI has meant to you in your career? Oh, BMI, man, is <laughs> Doreen, Ringer Ross, and Linda Livingston. I mean, they have been amazing in my career. The thing that I love about them is that you can tell they have a love for music and they love the artist and they really support the artist. I've never felt so uh, much a part of a community as I've had working you know, with these guys at BMI. It's been a great experience from the first day up until today. I love it.